in honour of Erwin Schrodinger's birthday on the 12th of August 1887. Today I thought I would have a go at modelling Erwin Schrodinger and his rather eclectic combination of uh, winter and summer clothes in his uh, daily wardrobe. Now he was a Nobel Prize winner, um, most notably his, uh, his contributions to um, the world of physics include uh, working towards a unified field theory um, but he covered many different um, subject areas, everything from statistical mechanics, thermodynamics, uh, the physics of dielectrics, uh, colour theory, electrodynamics, general relativity, cosmology. I think most people will know him for being the, uh, the guy that put his name to the thought experiment with the cat in a box. It was in 1933 that he won the Nobel Prize for his work in quantum physics. Uh, sadly, now these days, um, in the age of, uh, you know, information being at our fingertips 24-7, uh, we now know of Schrodinger as either the cat man or, or as the, uh, the dude that rocked the, uh, the combination of shorts, winter coat and bow tie. So here's the, uh, here's the fun on product. It's um it's a bit scrappy around the back. I didn't really finish things like the hair and the collar's a bit wonky and there's all kinds of stuff I could go back and fix. But the idea was I would uh, again try and do something in a quick way, medium to low poly. I say low poly, I mean by today's standards, and uh, just model something fun, just to then try and uh, get my chops in terms of uh, modelling characters and stuff because. Uh, I still had to finish the uh, the clown core guys for the uh, the clown core van project, um, but anyway. So this is a, a little aside, again, just to uh, celebrate Schrodinger's birthday on the uh, on the twelfth, um, and uh, yeah. So this is based off the uh, based off that picture, um, hands behind the back, the wonky bow tie, the winter coat, and the shorts, and then just for um, normal people who won't recognise him purely from the outfit. I'm going to try and edit down the uh, two or two and a bit hours of random modelling stuff into maybe some interesting bits that I can talk over. Um, and that's it. Yeah, so there you go. There's 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 my interpretation of Schrodinger with his uh, cat in a box. So always start with some reference on some uh, some cards, and then. Uh, as usual, doing it the uh, unconventional way, keeping the default cube and box modeling stuff out from it. So this is just a case of using a lot of loop cuts and uh, knife tool to then start adding some, what the bloody hell? Lights go mental. Uh, yeah, loop cuts and yeah, the knife tool, making liberal use of the knife tool to then start bringing in like things like the collar here, which is um, kind of hard to do a fur collar in a, um, in a low poly style, but there we go. Um, looking up how bow ties uh, work, because uh, this really confounded me. This collar, and I probably need to do a whole um, whole bunch of uh, collars to actually get used to modelling how um, shirts work. Because usually I'll just hide stuff beneath a head, and I won't bother with actual detail here. But that's um, oh yeah, back to low spec for some palettes. I downloaded a bunch here to try out different sort of colours. Ended up going with quite a mute, muted palette. But I think next time, or even maybe at the end of this, I might mess around with some other palettes just to see what other colours looked like, because there were some quite cool, um, um, I don't know, usual 90s retro kind of stuff. Here we are modelling out the bow tie. So. <coughs> Again, like other videos, I'll um, just duplicate your face and then set it all back up again to be um, a cube. And then, uh, yeah, pretty much that, I suppose. So here we go, modelling the legs. I'm not actually adding the shorts at this stage. I don't know what my thought process was, but um, I'm sure there was some kind of rationale. Um, making like a light bulb shape right now for the head. So it's always good to start out with... Um, 
a rough approximation of the head you're going for, particularly if you're doing something stylized. Um, now, I don't have a particularly great knowledge of anatomy when it comes to the face or facial structures and stuff, but um, if you can, it's always good to, one, use reference, and two, get familiar with things like how um, the anatomical structures of the face are set up, so then when you're building things out, um, you know where things should sit and the proportions between things, so things where like cheekbones and noses and all that kind of stuff. By duplicating the faces out from the head and making the hair as a separate piece, it uh, makes things a bit easier when it comes to uh, loop cutting stuff and adding in extra polys where you don't want to add them to the rest of the head. Um, you can always bend things back in later if you must, but um, again, I'm not going to be using this in a game or anything, so I can be quite sloppy with um, how everything's um, set up in terms of topology. Um, the main thing is has how it reads from a distance. Okay, so I started, started adding the colours and then uh, <laughs> I don't know why I turned him to Ronald McDonald's. Um, yeah, yeah, so I think uh, I was trying to figure out what kind of colour palette to use, but um, yeah, I do thankfully turn him back into like normal, normal colours. So most of this now is, is refinement, so once you've got a basic shape for it, once you've got a basic shape for a head, um, then yeah, it's just a case of like looking at it from different angles, tweaking it around, and making sure, again, that you're not just looking at things in the orthographic view, which can tend to flatten things out and make things look different, but um, move things around, look at it in three in the 3D view, and look at it from all angles, just to make sure it looks right from, from, from the front and the back, and, and so on. Okay, so back to modeling the shorts. And most of this now, I mean, uh, the majority of the model is done. Um, so this is just me mostly tweaking now. Um, but, uh, I think you might have caught that. For the glasses, I'm not using a cylinder, I'm just duplicating out a face squaring it up and then turning it back into a circle again with some loop cuts and this is my um, this can be a much more intuitive way to model I think than adding primitives in if you're just working with what's already there um, one lesson I learned here was that I'd uh, placed his uh, ears too high for the um, for the arms of the glasses which I'll, I'll guess I'll come to in a, in a minute now um, you know, one of the lessons I've learned more recently than I'd like is, uh, you know, not being too precious about stuff. So, um, previously when I'd be building things, I may may have been a bit sort of precious about, I'd build something and then I wouldn't want to tweak it or change it because I'd be like, oh, this is perfect. Why do I want to, why, would I, why do I want to change this around? But um, don't be afraid to chop and change stuff, delete things, tweak it keep going keep moving it around till it looks right because um, otherwise you'll never really learn or grow and uh, that's definitely what's been holding me back I think is just being being afraid to uh, sort of mess around with stuff too much once I've made them and then kind of just abandon projects rather than uh, try and fix them so the shoes are kind of a guess because I have no idea what his um, actual shoes look like because they cropped out the photo but this is my best approximation. And then some tweaking of the calves and stuff. And I assume he's wearing socks. It looks like socks, but who knows. Uh, tweaking out the bow tie. I, I managed to lose the bow tie inside of his neck somehow. Um, and I think this is where I finally decide, well, maybe I should use more than one texture. Because uh, though 
the purist in me wants to keep it all in one particular material. Um, I think at some point I go, I, I, I do start using transparent textures on the uh, on the glasses. Oh yeah, this was this was uh, absolute hell trying to pose arms behind a pack. It should be easier. I could have just rigged it, but I didn't because I thought, well, it'd be quicker just to uh, to pose it by hand. But oh no, it wasn't. And uh, trying to pose hands, not least when you've uh, swapped the right and left hands around the wrong way, it's uh, it's challenging. So again, a bit of artistic license here um, with the button positions. So now I've finished the modeling and I don't need the mirror modifier on anymore. I've dispensed with that symmetry and now I'm adding the sort of uh, the line and the coat so it actually overlaps and looks more like a coat. Um, this is box modeling. The least interesting thing here. Oh, it's true. Oh, God. I was trying to add a bit of randomness to the uh, to the cat, but um, to the cat to the box, but I gave up. But this is probably the the fastest possible um, cat modelling I've ever done. I think I'm a bit too familiar with modelling cats from boxes, but there you go. So um, just again using every possible angle to then tweak things to make sure it looks right from the side and from the front. Don't just rely on the um, orthographic views to then see how things look. Because the camera, if you're using a non-orthographic camera, will distort things. So it's trying to make sure things look good from those angles. And I think we're in the in the home stretch now. So just, uh, just setting up things with the beauty renders. Deciding on background colors and stuff. I did initially like this green. But I think it casts too much of a sort of green glow over everything when it's rendered in cycle. So I think that's why I went back to white. Yeah, you can see here. The green is a bit overpowering. Yeah. I think for, uh, you know, again... This is not something I'm particularly uh, well versed at. What am I? Oh yeah, the pause. That's what the hell that was. Yeah, I'm still. I'm. I. I. I've been doing it on and off for years, but I still am kind of still a quite an amateur when it comes to modelling stuff. So <laughs> most of the time it's winging it because I have no idea what I'm doing or no idea where I'm going with it. So. Um. Mostly it works out though, I think. So this is just uh, oh, modeling with, um, what's it called? The proportional editing thing. So it has like a, a fall off ramp. So when you're turning things or scaling stuff, it will scale the other pixels in a sort of proximity to it. There you go. So here come the uh, here come the beauty shots.